Well, Dr. David Worthington, thank you very much for joining us. Um, I'd like to start, if, if you can, if you could just introduce yourself, kind of tell us a little bit about the work that you do. Okay, um, my name is David Worthington. I'm head of the Centre for History at the University of the Highlands and Islands, and I am very interested in Scottish migration to Central Europe in the broadest sense. And that has led me gradually towards Poland because numerically Poland was probably the most significant destination for that migration. Um, I'm interested in various other themes as well, but I suppose predominantly my interest is the 17th and 18th centuries, which coincides really with that community, that Scottish community in Poland being at its most important. So talking about that, that migration to Poland, could you tell us a bit about um, that migration that happened to Poland and kind of why Scottish people went out there, what were the kind of numbers that went out there? Mm -hmm. Why did it happen? I think it was very predominantly about trade and commerce. And people often have an image, I think, when they think of a Scottish migrant, it's quite often a martial image, a military trope perhaps. In the case of Poland, it was largely about trade. So it started, as far as we know, at the end of the 14th century. But it peaks at the end of the 16th century, so 1590s through to about the 1610s. That's when the numbers appear to be at their greatest. Now, the community thereafter, for a few decades, is extremely significant. The numbers are contested. Um, you could read all sorts of figures from a few thousand to 30,000 families, in the words of William Lithgow, who was a Scottish traveller who went to Poland. I think we're talking about several thousand. Mm -hmm. um, that means, given that they were dispersed throughout not only Poland, but Poland-Lithuania, mm -hmm. arguably the largest state in Europe, they were a pr profound presence. So any significant sized town would have had Scottish people in it. So I think the Scot was a figure with whom the Poles were familiar in most settings. Mm -hmm. And um, what was, was it kind of working class Scots that were going out or was it kind of rich and merchants that were? Again, very good question. It often looks like there are two types of Scottish people in Poland. There's the rich merchant who's doing very well. Let's say, for example, in Gdańsk, in central Gdańsk or Danzig, very much part of a multicultural, multilingual community in that city, um, probably with a good art collection, um, interest in cultural patronage, music and so on. That's one type. We also have a very different type of Scottish traveller in Poland, and I say travel because they were a very itinerant population. And the word Scot or Schott in Polish and in German in fact starts to take on a different meaning. It probably originates with Scottish migration from the 15th century, perhaps. But by the 17th century, that term's being used to describe itinerant merchants more broadly. And it's actually very hard to get a sense of whether these people are Scottish or not. They're called Scots, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's an ethnic identity. It's a social and cultural position that they occupied. So there are two different figures, and as you can imagine, the rich merchants are sometimes quite keen to distinguish themselves mm -hmm. from these impoverished, rather unpopular, extremely hardy um, Scottish merchants who were at the bottom of the pile in the socio-economic sense. Okay, and going on from that, were, what was the kind of reception in Poland, Lithuania, to Scots coming over? Uh, varied, I think you would have to say. Um, there are quite a lot of accounts from popular culture of this. Um, one source is poetry, particularly Baroque poetry in Poland from the later 16th century. So when Poland starts to experience the Catholic Reformation very powerfully, um, ethnic Poles and others there start to write about some of these ethnic groups. Now, in terms of the Scots, it's generally quite a pejorative, negative depiction. Um, Poles um, perceive the Scots as keen to make money, mm -hmm. uh, as keen to play the role of, of the middle class in Poland, and yeah, there's quite a lot of pejorative stuff there. However, that's not the whole story. Um, I think given just how multi-ethnic Poland was, Poland was extremely diverse mm -hmm. at that time. Poland-Lithuania was extremely diverse at that time. 
The Scots were one of many ethnicities. They were not alone. It was not an homogenous Roman Catholic country. There were people from all sorts of backgrounds. So it wasn't unusual for, to have these minorities. And I think they actually coped quite well. We do have sporadic outbreaks of anti-Scottish comments, for instance. There's a kind of tumult in Torun in the early 18th century. But on the whole, they did okay. There's not a lot of violence against them. There's not a lot of particularly significant problems. And we could debate about what is the appropriate term here, but the Scots integrate, assimilate, they become part of that society. Unfortunately, one of the things we don't know as well as we might is how that would have turned out in the 19th century, because Poland, Lithuania is partitioned out of existence mm -hmm. between 1772 and 1795. So a lot of the evidence from that time and a lot of the fabric of that society was really ripped apart by those three partitions. True. And was, was the population that went out there, was it one that was going to settle in Poland or was it one that was kind of, you know, part-time, like go out there and make a bit of money and then come back to Scotland kind yeah. of idea? Well, that's a really interesting question. Again, I mean, there are lots of examples of return migration, mm -hmm. reinvestment, repatriation is a problematic term, but reinvestment of money, of wealth in Scotland, that does happen. There are bursaries at universities, Robert Gordon's Hospital in Aberdeen that becomes Robert Gordon University. That's founded by a Scot called Robert Gordon, surprisingly enough, who um, was a merchant who made his money in Danzig, Gdansk. So there's a lot of people who were going back and forth. There are some interesting merchants accounts precisely of this. On the other hand, there were others who were keen to settle because they identified a gap in Polish society. Mm -hmm. Poland had a large nobility, the Schlachter they considered trade beneath them. So for somebody who was prepared to engage in that, there were opportunities. Quite why the Scots go there in such large numbers though is still difficult to answer because we don't see English merchants to the same extent. There's no old alliance between Scotland and Poland. There's no kind of romantic idea of two countries united forever. It's not like that. But they find the opportunities and they, yeah, they work alongside Dutch, Italian, even Armenian merchants, Jewish merchants as well, and they often intermarry, but they retain quite a strong identity. And I think a lot of them went out there with every intention of staying. I would just point to one example, which is not a mercantile one, but it's a kind of interesting one. Um, Patrick Gordon is a man from Aberdeenshire who leaves in the 1640s. Uh, he gets on a boat in Aberdeen Harbour, doesn't know where he's going. The skipper says he's going to Danzig. He says, OK, may as well. He gets off, doesn't know what he's going to do. He signs up at the local Jesuit school in Braniewo, uh, Brownsburg as it was known then. Doesn't like it, it's too strict a way of learning. He ponders what he's going to do and then he joins the army. So really, he, a lot of these people were younger sons. They had no fortune at home. There was, they had nothing to lose. And another route into it was that military one. So sometimes Scots who'd served in armies, not only the Polish army, settled in Poland. So you have examples of Scots who'd served even in the Swedish army against Poland in the 1650s who then settled in Poland. So yeah, there are very many routes into this and very many different types of migrants. Um, another one who was probably quite transient was the intellectual migrant. Scots went to study in Poland because it was open. It was accepting of Catholics, of Calvinists, of people with different backgrounds. So the religious background of these migrants was more often than not Calvinist, but there were many Scottish Catholics who went to study at Jesuit schools in Poland too. So while I'm emphasizing the mercantile trading presence, it's really important to remember that this was a very diverse community. And often within the same family, you'd find people, one who was at university, one who was a merchant, one who was a soldier, mm -hmm. all who may have crossed paths within the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth.